What gives you hope about the future? I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. If if you <laughs> if you look a hundred years from now, and you're immortal, and you look back, and it turns out this whole conversation, you said a lot of things that were very wrong. Now that looking hundred hundred years back, what would be the explanation? What happened in those hundred years that made you wrong? That made the words you said today wrong. There is so many possibilities. We had catastrophic events which prevented development of advanced microchips. <laughs> That's not That's where a I thought you were going. Future. Uh, we could be in one of those <laughs> personal yeah. universes, yes. and the one I'm in is beautiful. It's all about me, and I like it a lot. So we've now just to linger on that. That means like every so every human has their personal universe. Yes, maybe multiple ones. Hey, why not? You can shop around. Uh, it's possible that somebody comes up with alternative model for building AI, which is not based on neural networks, which are hard to scrutinize. And that alternative is somehow, I don't see how, but somehow avoiding all the problems uh, I speak about in general terms, not applying them to specific architectures. Uh, aliens come and give us friendly superintelligence. There is so many options. Is it also possible that creating super intelligent systems becomes harder and harder? So meaning like, it's not so easy to do the uh, foom, the takeoff. So that would probably speak more about how much smarter that system is compared to us. So maybe it's hard to be a million times smarter, but it's still okay to be five times smarter. Right. So that is totally possible. That I have no objections to. So like it's, there's a S-curve type situation about smarter and it's going to be like 3.7 times smarter than all of human civilization. Right, just the problems we face in this world, each problem is like an IQ test. You need certain intelligence to solve it. So we just don't have more complex problems outside of mathematics for it to be showing off. Like you can have IQ of 500. If you're playing tic-tac-toe, it doesn't show. It doesn't matter. So the idea there is that the problems define your capacity, your cognitive capacity. So because the problems on Earth are not sufficiently difficult, it's not going to be able to um, expand its cognitive capacity. Possible. And because of that, wouldn't that be a good thing? That it still could be a lot smarter than us. And to dominate long-term, you just need some advantage. You have to be the smartest. You don't have to be a million times smarter. So even 5X it might be enough? It'd be impressive. What is it, IQ of 1,000? I mean, yeah, I know right. those units don't mean anything at that scale, but still, like... As a comparison, the smartest human is like 200. Well, actually, no, I didn't mean compared to an individual human. I, com I meant compared to the collective intelligence of the human species. If you're somehow 5x smarter than that. We are more productive as a group. I don't think we are more capable of solving individual problems. Like if all of humanity plays chess together, we are not like a million times better than world champion. That's because the that there's... Uh, that's like one S curve is the ch chess, but humanity is very good at exploring the full range of ideas. Like the more Einsteins you have, the more, the just a high probability you come up with general relativity. But I feel like it's more of a quantity super intelligence than quality super yeah. intelligence. Sure, but the, you know, quantity and-, and Enough quantity sometimes becomes quality, yeah. <laughs>